beyond doubt the elections have definitely uh, striked the surge a lot like it is after the elections that the surge happened in this video a kerala resident is going to talk about the covid situation in kerala with respect to lockdown election vaccination and makeshift hospital hello all so today in this episode we have jesslu selin jacob who's doing her phd program related to energy efficient buildings at iit kharagpur under the prestigious pmrf fellowship she's previously worked as an architect in kitco which is a central public sector company uh, you know and she's done a lot of government projects there in kerala and elsewhere and you know she's received a lot of architectural awards including the award at singapore from the international building council she's right now you know uh, in kochi and she's that's also her hometown in kerala so how's everything jesslu how are you i'm fine i'm doing very good at kerala right now in cochin we had uh, the cyclone hit a few days back and it was raining continuously today there's some brightness so it's a very happy day today so the cyclone i mean was it like very severe or how was it like oh yes 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 it was very severe rain for the past 3 days it was raining continuously and many places it's been flooded and also yeah it was pretty bad and now uh, in news it's shown that the cyclone's moving upper coast to mumbai to gujarat and all so kerala has been uh, the kerala phase is over right now but uh, the other parts of india are still going to experience it was was the you know your administration local people like were they prepared for this you know because the warning was given pretty early so are the people safe there yeah people are safe but again uh, these things there are uh, limitations to how much a government can control it right like if Absolutely. it's hit then it's hitting badly and people living in the coast do get affected how much ever it's been tried but again uh, the measures are pretty good they've been taken to other places shifted and also that's been done but again losses have happened uh, but at the same time you know we look at a greater disaster that's you know happening all across the world that is the covid pandemic so you know i just want to ask you i um, mean you, you know is is kerala right now in a lockdown how's your city how's kochi like, like are you are you allowed to go out what's going on tell us all it's uh, the state is under complete lockdown uh, it and it's very strict very stringent so uh, the lockdown was supposed to end uh, on 17 that is beginning of this week but it's got extended to one more week and uh, people are not allowed to go out uh, if if anybody is going out for any emergency purpose they need to have that self declaration or else uh, police can catch them even uh, so the only offices that are working are uh, certain uh, state government essential services apart from that all the offices are shut uh, all the containment zones are barricaded and Uh, entry and exit is being prohibited and even these offices which are working uh, most of them work only on alternate days or at 50% staff so a lot of measures in that regard have been taken in fact banks also they work only on alternate days and that too only half a day and most of the uh, groceries and everything is uh, home delivered uh, so that people don't have to uh, go outside a lot of shops have started doing that uh and now like in this lockdown period that home delivery is also reduced to alternate days in a week so the state can be said to be under uh what full strict measures so you know i see that black voting mark on your left finger so yes. i you you suppose i think you voted in this kerala assembly election yes you know like yes. there has been a lot of international criticism over elections gatherings political rallies so you know has there been any ill effect of these election rallies and the whole poll process with respect to the rise in covid cases or was it all controlled all managed properly tell us about the election and the relation to covid beyond doubt the elections have definitely uh, striked the surge a lot like it is after the elections that the surge happened so uh, from experience also uh, from what i saw also was that during elections it was as if uh, there was no covid at that time like or rather covid was put in a halt and i'm pretty sure that's been how it's been in almost all the states uh, which went through election recently so and uh, the sad fact is that so in my area uh, at, in cochin so there there were certain uh, political leaders who got infected during the rally so after they visited a few houses later they came to know that they were infected so during the process of rallies itself people were falling sick and in fact recently uh, one of the councillor who got elected he passed away because of covid so that the, in my nearby constituency so that was again very 
very sad so uh, so elections have definitely had a very very negative impact on the whole uh, covid process and i would say that it's not just elections but other other like for instance religious rallies and uh, entertainment so all those were kind of moving towards a stage where covid is completely uh, completely left us and they were coming back to the old normal everything together led to that surge and elections have a very important role in that it, yeah and during the election also so this is also another personal experience so uh, the voting booths or the election booths uh, all the social distancing and uh, sanitizing protocols were maintained but i observed that the collection centers like many of the collection centers this was not maintained like for instance uh, my mother had election duty and when we went to pick her up the scene that we saw was pretty pretty disturbing because over there it was not organized and how uh, people are going in to give the boxes to come so it was a proper what a, a group like or a clutter of people standing together so there was no absolutely zero social distancing happening there so yes so in kerala also and i'm not saying that this happened everywhere in certain certain places where they could not organize it properly it did happen so yeah so in kerala also because of the elections uh, a lot of cases have increased but what you're saying what you just told me is that it could have been better so local authorities could have done better you know around maintaining the covid protocols election time Definitely. and especially for the election workers like your mother who have worked you know during the election no in fact uh, to that point there were certain centers where it was organized very well so i'm saying that so i know certain people who worked in certain centers where it was so well organized that they did not have to go through this uh, this rush or queue in order to get get that work done so so yes so organization yes it it plays an important role and it could have been very well managed but okay. in certain places they couldn't so your know, kerala has been a state which has previously you know encountered and successfully dealt to an extent with the nipah virus you know you know about it you know people talk about it and you know they had managed it very competently now is that was what was the basis for the good management during the first wave in kerala and you know are the lessons learned during the first wave helping in the second wave in any way tell us about it so uh, about nipah virus so uh in terms of the virus as such like for instance in terms of the symptoms and the spread of the disease so uh in terms of the disease uh they cannot actually be compared but yes uh this did help uh, the the state uh, health officials and doctors at different levels to understand what are the different measures that they need to take or where are these sectors in the health department that they need to focus in order to reduce the spread or contain the disease without spreading it much so those lessons which were learned from nipa were utilized during the first wave so uh, to start with uh, kerala had started uh, quarantining people and also uh, practicing social distancing even before this the center went under complete lockdown so uh, i mean i just just to share a personal experience yeah yeah you know so 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 yeah. you know, before you share the personal experience i want to ask you about the magic sauce that kerala had in the first wave which had you know partly you know they have derived from the nipa virus experience which helped them in the first wave and is it helping them now so you please tell us this and you also tell us about the about the personal experience that you are about to share yes yes so um so the magic sauce i mean if you ask me like that uh, i would just simply put it as the people like it is the uh, citizens who took it upon them to take care of themselves and who understood the gra- the gravity of the situation that led to this uh, lesser spread and uh and able to contain the disease mainly uh because you know like there are limitations to which the government can do the government can support people but again the uh, uh again reducing the chance of spread of disease comes uh, or narrows down to every individual but won't you give any credit to the kerala's you know socialist no, based healthcare system oh definitely definitely i'm coming to that point so i'm saying that the emphasis is on people and to facilitate people to do this definitely the government has been very strong enough uh starting from uh supplying ration kits and uh, free uh, food items to all the people in the state during lockdown so this gave people uh, an opportunity to stay at home without being tensed about how they would earn their living so yes so that definitely uh, urged people like or, or gave them an opportunity so that was one part uh, yeah so to my understanding about 1 lakh families were served with these free kits uh, including migrant laborers so yeah so the government has done that so this this happened on the first wave and now even in the second wave right now the government has promised that uh, free kits will be delivered to people 
um and also uh, government is uh, taking the second wave right now has standardized the rates for almost all the treatment for uh, covid in different hospitals starting from multi specialty hospital also like they have standardized the rate so anywhere a person goes they would only have to pay that so the government is taking into consideration the plight of the poor as well so that definitely has helped people so so with this aid in the end it is people who were able to uh, to take the responsibility yeah and also uh, so we used to have this chief ministers we still have chief ministers uh, press conference almost every evening so where uh, where there was more transparency on what is happening around the chief minister himself speaks about what is happening so i would say this also led to uh, what rising the sp spirit of the people and in fact instilling a sense of i mean not fear but again i would say responsibility that it is upon them that if the situation was and that this is going to happen so everybody was aware and yeah so this awareness i would also link it to the higher uh, education knowledge that people have that they were able to uh, assimilate that what is going to happen and uh, react accordingly you told us that you know the transparency that was possible by the constant touch the government have with the citizens to every evening uh you know online conference online uh, like an interview on on television by the chief minister really you know boosted up the spirit so which is something which most states and the center could learn you know where more transparency could really help you know in instilling a good faith in people and as you said that you know people are the magic sauce in one of the answers it's like when people yes. took it on themselves they could do it much better they actually policed themselves rather than the government policing them so you know i'm going to ask you something regarding vaccination so are you vaccinated and you know if men so if you are vaccinated congratulations because there are a lot of people uh, because of shortage who are not able to get vaccinated so so are you vaccinated no i'm not you not vaccinated so what's the situation when are you going to get vaccinated how is it right now because delhi they have started from 18 to 45 how is vaccination situation in kerala yeah so uh so vaccination as of now for youth like 18 plus uh, it's only available in uh, two two private hospitals like astor and apollo government hospitals have not started vaccination for uh, youth uh, whatever vaccines the government has it's mainly used for 45 plus people who got their first dose of vaccine in the uh, month of march so their second dose is due so they have been given a priority so that's the situation right now uh, and uh, so what what we have to do right now is uh, there's an app where we can register and we can see whether slots are available and slots are not available uh, and also there's another portal where uh, where we can upload our uh, medical history or if in case uh, one has uh, one one feels that they are more prone to the disease or other uh, health issues then they can register that and after the government verifies the genuinity of it these people will be given a priority when the vaccines are available so so that process is also happening so it's and, like yeah, a, and the government is it's like a giant waiting list that the government is creating on like yeah, a, giant, it's a giant exactly it's a giant waiting list and in that the government is prioritizing on whom to give the vaccines first because as soon as they get it they they want this list to be ready to give it and regarding the vaccines also i mean recently yesterday it was a news that they've just floated fresh tenders uh, asking for a uh, vaccine so that's that's just in the process so it looks like it'll be about another couple of months before youth uh, starts to get their vaccine so right now the priority is on 45 plus so i feeling happy that you're not getting vaccinated very soon obviously not <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and if, and once you get vaccinated will you have to pay for it or will it be like government sponsored yeah so both are available uh, in a sense if it is in the government hospital then it'll be government sponsored we will not have to pay for it but uh, if it is in the private hospital that we are getting it from then uh, they can charge as much as they want so as i mentioned like right now there are two private hospitals giving so uh, they're given about to about i think less than 100 people and they are charging uh, their own rates like it is not a government prescribed rate or anything okay so you know like you you heard what happened in delhi you know there were bed shortages oxygen shortage people were running around is the kerala government and your city prepared for such a surge do you see around hospitals you know which are over prepared do you see you know makeshift quarantine centers ready do you see or you at least hear in the air the sense of preparedness in kerala for any surge in the case so uh, to think about that yeah, the hospital facilities um, 
So there are a lot of makeshift hospitals coming up. Uh, there are a lot of halls being converted to hospitals. And in some places where people, uh, where hospital beds are not available, uh, the oxygen cylinder and the facilities are being installed at their homes also. So such kind of activities are happening. Uh, so if we uh, look closer, like comparing all the temporary beds and the hospital beds, which are available uh, all throughout the state, only 50% of it has been occupied till now. So there's still possibility. And uh, in if you take uh, the ICUs, like which have been occupied about only uh, 30 to 40 percentage has been occupied. That opportunity is there. But at the same time, this is not evenly distributed all throughout the state. So uh, certain populated cities have already exhausted their beds and they don't have, uh, they cannot accommodate anything more. So yeah, so uh, to talk about that, if there is a surge like what happened in Delhi, then uh, Kerala would also be under stress. Like, uh, despite of all these facilities like which are available uh, the sur a surge like what happened in delhi will be will cause problems so and that is one of the reasons why uh, certain cities have been put under triple lockdown so that that surge does not happen so government is taking care that such a spread will not happen because we will not be able to handle it and even uh, like kerala so was uh, uh, was marked well for its oxygen self sufficiency. So that 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 part is also there. Like there are companies like BPCL, FACT, which are converting their industrial grade oxygen to medical grade. So that facility is also happening right now. But despite all this, uh, if there's a surge like Delhi again, because in certain pockets or in highly populated cities, uh, it will not be possible to uh, to control it. It it will be bad. So such lockdowns are definitely necessary. And how is the testing going on there? So like around you, are there testing centers nearby? Is it a, is it a testing center where you can walk to? How is the testing? And you know, like, is it like, is it taking too much time? Is it too much away? Or is it like too much rush at those testing centers? Tell us about the testing center. Yeah, so the testing has been pretty good. Uh, pretty good from before. And now the number of testing centers have also increased. Like uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity to test. So roughly we get the results in about uh, 24 hours or uh, maximum uh, 48 hours, not more than that. Like within that time, the test results are available. So initially, uh, they, they were they, when different private uh, uh, clinics started uh, testing, uh, the rates were pretty high. But as I mentioned before, now the government has standardized the rates. So the testing rates are also fixed so that anybody who wants a test will not uh, be charged higher than what is the government prescribed rate. So yeah, so that is pretty good. And uh, almost uh, like before any travel, uh, a test is mandated. Right now, even to enter malls, a test is mandated. So I mean, before lockdown started, uh, before the second lockdown started, to enter malls also, uh, it was said that we need to have our RT-PCR report. So yeah, so the test and the facilities are available. There, there's never been a door to facilities. Uh, it's it's there. Yes, we have covered a lot of, you've covered a lot of ground today. You've spoken about, you know, uh, how's, how the conversations, you've spoken about how election rallies contributed, how Nipah virus was a lesson which Kerala learned and, you know, built up upon it. And you spoke about, you know, uh, vaccinations and, you know, the waiting list uh, app and you spoke about you know the future and the uh, the surge preparation in Kerala and now you also spoken about testing you know uh, as we reach the end of the interview I want to ask you a question of hope and that question is that if there is one wish that you know you would you know want to want that comes true what would that wish be so I mean I would say like almost everybody that wish would be to probably think that wake up one day and realize that this was all a dream and it did not really happen like i'm pretty sure a lot of people would be thinking that but uh maybe on a more practical ground i think i would hope that we would be able to overcome this uh we would be able to cope with whatever is happening around us physically mentally and emotionally and uh be positive and face it the way it is great yes Lou, you were great you know today you, you shared a lot uh, enlightened the inter enlightened all the viewers who are uh, you know watching us and you know especially told us about Kerala which was one of the good examples of dealing with uh, COVID so you know I'm sure it's going to benefit a lot of viewers and a lot of other people who can influence their states to you know do what Kerala did so thank you so much Jesslu for being with us it was great having you thank you so much and yeah, thank you. It was a very, it was a good opportunity for me also to open up and speak like this and interact with you, in fact, and for all the viewers. So yeah, so thank you so much for inviting me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.